everyone. Welcome to Reawaken Your Brilliance. What are elementals? What are fairies? How can they help us in manifestation? Can they help us with our garden? We're going to talk about that and much, much more this afternoon. In today's Reawaken You... You know, I love social media, but social media can also drive me crazy. And someone got upset recently at me. I was at the beach last week disconnected and something had happened and they were upset that I didn't respond. And I was like, you know what? I'm not on 24 seven. So I'm going to encourage you if there's something important in your life that you need to share with someone, email or pick up the phone. You know, everything doesn't need to be via social media. It is a way of connecting us, but I think in some ways it disconnects us from life and our friends. So if it's important, speak up and let someone know. And just examine your connections. Are you spending all your time on social media or at home playing games with people you've never met? Or are you getting out and meeting and truly connecting with people? All right, we're going to tell you about today's guest. I'm super excited. Annie has been on the show a couple times, and we've got to have her back for another great topic. Annie Day is the owner of Heaven Sent Bliss. She's been a therapist for several years and has studied many healing disciplines, including aromatherapy, crystal therapy, Egyptian sacrum, essences, health kinesiology, reflexology, Reiki, seashell healing, sex therapy, sweetest massage, and tree spirit healing. She has also studied psychology and practices as a stress consultant. As a holistic therapist, she utilizes her skills and experience to develop a totally unique program tailored to each individual. Annie believes in the power of prayer. This coupled with each discipline brings about the most healing benefits. She also believes healing is enhanced when the patient takes an active part of in their own healing process. Welcome back, Annie. Hello there, Julie. I'm delighted to be back at Reawaken Your Brilliance. We are excited to have you because you are awesome and always a lot of fun. Love your background. It's purple. It's groovy and we're ready to go. So let's get started. Fairies. What are fairies? What are elementals? Right. They are um, to, to our physicality. They're actually invisible beings. Um, but we are able to see them just by softening our peripheral vision. So if you really want to engage with fairies and elementals, that's the best way of doing it. Just soften your vision. And you remember a few years ago that there used to be the seeing eye pictures where you'd look beyond the picture and it would look like little squares. And then when you look through it, there'd be a dolphin jumping through a hoop or whatever it was. So it's very much the same principle as that if you really want to see them. So the elemental kingdom, so it's fire, air, water for our elements. So some of the elementals that you would see are traditionally, most people have seen um, pictorial representations of flower fairies, and they're the most obvious ones, um, particularly in Celtic traditions. But as well as that, there are mermaids, which obviously are from the water, and they're fire sprites as well. But there are lots of other um, sort of denominations as well. Divas are usually found very near, very close to trees and have a real affinity with trees. Um, and elves and gnomes have an affinity with the earth and are more than capable of helping you with gardening jobs. So each of the elementals has a particular role, but also has particular qualities as well. And sometimes the reason that they're not helping you with everything that you would like is because they will not break your free will. And sometimes we expect that nature spirits will actually intervene and do something to help us. And actually they're not allowed to do that because that would engage with them breaking our free will. And we have to have free choice about how we engage with these incredibly powerful Um, elemental beings and I think that at the moment particularly in the UK there is um, there's been quite a difference in opinion about fairies and elementals uh, not least thanks to J.M. Barry who's given all the rights to Peter Pan to Great Ormond Street Hospital so within the last five years particularly people there's been a resurgence in people's um interest in fairies and elementals and these extraordinary beings just because that's literally using your word reawaken their interest in it so yeah very exciting times well, we have a comment here i want to read from erin she said she yeah. uses over lighting of healing in a process called mapping yeah so talk a little bit about that because i have no idea what she's talking about 
OK, so basically, if you want um, some help with healing and you need to have um, some help from um, the fairies, elementals, then what you do is literally you ask for the overlighting um, energy of the particular um, element that you want to help with to actually take charge and just take over and do it. But until you actually ask for that, they're literally, I can imagine that they're stood at the sidelines going, go on, just ask me, ask me, and then I'll help you. So um, literally what she's talking about is that you're actually asking for the elements to come forward and actually show themselves to you, communicate with you, dependent on where your gifts lie. So it could be that you're clear, uh, sentient, so you actually feel the elements when they come in. It could be that you're clairaudient, so you actually hear messages from them, or it could be that you're clairvoyant and you actually see them. And actually, as I explained earlier, it's just a matter of training yourself that you can actually be able to see them. So, yes, thank you. Well, thanks for making that distinction because I would say that I'm mainly clairaudient, but more clairescient. It's one of, one of those two, but I've started to have interesting things and I liked how you talked at the beginning about softening our vision because I, this is starting to happen more and more like I'll see something and boom it's gone like it was never there and I'm like okay I know I saw it, it you know but then it, it's gone like that so it's good to remember that now I'm really curious for instance we go to the same beach place every year is the same mermaid hanging out there and like at my house do the elementals hang out here and if I were to move away what do they move with me or do they stay with the house what's been your experience with that um I've been very gifted because um since I was two I've been able to see fairies and um um I my grandparents I spent a lot of time with my grandparents as a small child and they didn't tell me that not everybody could see fairies and elementals and angels and, and tree spirits. So they really encouraged that gift within me. And it came as a bit of a shock when I started school and at four and a half. And I was talking about fairies and elementals conversationally and about seeing angels, tree spirits. And I got trashed. Literally, I was so bullied because people are scared of what they don't understand. And because I'd got this gift and I didn't know that not everybody could could see fairies, not everybody could feel their presence. And so literally I went to school talking about something that for me was an everyday occurrence that was that I kind of expected that everybody had got the same gifts and that everybody would know that. And literally what happened was I got bullied really badly because um, because I, because I was talking about something that was outside of the other children's experience. And I think for probably until I was oh, early 20s, I actually dumbed down my psychic ability just to survive. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I do think that we've all got that ability. It's just like any muscle, our psychic ability muscle, the more we use it and acknowledge it, the stronger it gets. That seems to be my um that seemed to be my take on it um as for whether they follow us round, i'm sure that just like we have a guardian angel we have a nature spirit that's attached to us as soon as we incarnate on the planet so literally as soon as we come into being on planet earth we've got fairies and elementals that will be our guardians and they will make their presence known and just like with angels you'll often see a white feather There'll be things like that when you're engaging with fairies and elementals as well. So, um, yeah, I, I'm sure that they would follow you around because you would have one assigned to you um, from the time that you incarnated on the planet. Does that answer your question? Oh, absolutely. And But I, I have a follow-up question for that. But before the follow-up question, I have another question. So has it been your experience <laughs> that, say... If we all have an elemental attached to us, are there other elementals that their job is to say to hang out in Emerald Isle, North Carolina and protect the beach, for example? Oh, absolutely. And they're very much into fairies and elementals are very attracted to people who take care of the ocean and the earth. And because that's the planet that, you know, that's the part of the planet that they live in, anybody who's into conservation work, 
is into taking care of our environment and treating it sacred because that's what it is. It's our mother, the earth and the ocean. Then they'll actually engage with you straight away because um, because they're really they're really happy that we're doing that. And um, often when I've been on a beach, I've made sure that I've collected all the debris off the beach and put it in a bin. Mm -hmm. I've made sure that I've tidied the beach up before I go beach combing or taking anything from the ocean. And I, you know, you've heard me speak about tree spirit healing previously. Um, that again, if I was going into a forest and I wanted the universe to give me witnesses, I'd make sure I did a tidy up operation first and did something that was healing for the environment, I mean. And then I know then that that will encourage the trees the mermaids, the elementals to come forward and engage with me because they they that's what they want us to do basically. Mm -hmm. No, I love that, but um, and that's great. And I always do that. And have been in my work. I brought it in about being green and when people would let go of clutter because I'm like, if you just throw it away, you know, it's something that can be recycled. So let's let's be yeah. smart about it. Absolutely. Well, so you're the first person, because again, I told you at the beginning, I didn't know a lot about this. So how would, would I get to know my elementals and fairies? Would I just be like, hey, I'm here, I'm open, I'm, please come and hang out and say hello? What would yes, you advise sir. someone? How do, we, how do we open up the lines of communication? Right, well, um, what you might want to do is um, sometimes the things that will attract fairies are... Um, Wind chimes, fairies and elementals love wind chimes. They love the sound of them. So let's say that you're at um, the bank of a river and you really want to get in touch with the undines and the water spirits, then literally singing, playing a pipe um, or just shaking wind chimes over the water is actually encouraging them because they love music and they love fun. So literally doing things like that will actually encourage them. They love drumming. They love stamping because literally they're so in contact with the earth that if you're doing sonic driving, you know, when you, you bang your feet on the floor and you go around in a circle, literally you're inviting them in. If you sing to them, um, again, they love music. If you drum, if you chant, that will encourage the fairies and elementals to come forward. And often just by giving them permission to come forward is enough as well. Just by saying, um, I'm acknowledging your presence and I want you to come forward now is enough, for, is enough for them to actually be able to engage with you. And again, as I said earlier, the more you acknowledge that you're getting signs that there's, you know, you might see the grass moving, you might see some leaves moving and quite often you know that you've been engaging with the fairies because we often say that we've gone away with the fairies you'll have this sudden surge of joy and you'll have lost a big chunk of time that you can't account for so literally half an hour's gone and you've no idea where you were or what you were doing you've just kind of come to and you just feel inexplicably happy that's the presence of fairies and elementals because they love joy and they love to give us joy as well. Oh, that's amazing. Now, I wonder this, even though they're elementals in nature, do the fairies or elementals, would they come into our home, even though it's, it's not oh, absolutely. nature? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. My lovely husband, Terry, makes fairy doors. And um, these beautiful fairy doors, and if I can reach them from there, but these fairy doors have double-sided tape on and he literally puts them all over the house. And we sell lots of them on our e-commerce site as well. But literally, um, what he believes, and so do I, and lots of other people who work with fairies consistently, is that <clears throat> if you put a fairy door on your house or a tree in your garden or on the garage, you're literally inviting the fairies to come in through a portal. So literally by putting that fairy door on and saying, this is my fairy door, you're actually inviting that joyful energy into your home. And also you're inviting the fairies in so they can make a difference to your home as well. And um, we know that quite often people who've been really grumpy and felt really <laughs> sad for a long time, um, literally 
they we've said you know you might want to buy one of the fairy doors because literally you're opening the portal between the fairies and elementals and the earth realm and you're actually inviting them to come in and they can have an impact on your um they can have an impact on your ability to receive happiness basically and joyfulness and they are great pranksters as well and they do play tricks and we all know about naughty fairies that hide keys and hide really important things until you've kind of become more joyful and you stop stressing out and then they'll go here you go and put it back to the place that you just looked at all right well that's good to know because the reason why i was curious is so joey our cat the other night was uh we were in my husband was at work and we were doing snuggy time in bed and he got up and he looked and I felt something but it wasn't like a I felt a, a presence before like when I felt it was a spirit or someone who passed and and or someone who hasn't come here yet so uh, very specific on that but I'm like hmm this is interesting there's something here but I can't quite put my finger on it yeah. on on what it is and so now hearing you say that the elementals come in and you know I think cats and other animals would be very sensitive to that so do oh, the, the elementals like to play with them with animals yeah absolutely and sometimes you'll see babies and the babies will be going da, 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 uh -huh. and looking at something that isn't anything to do with you they're looking you know off to the left or off to the right and literally seemingly having a conversation and i'm sure again that when babies are doing that or cats particularly are very sensitive um but animals have that sixth sense really um very strongly don't they i'm sure that they are communicating with fairies and elementals that because we can't see them with our physical eyes we don't know what it is that they're looking at so i'm sure that's the case yeah i'm sure that's the case no, that's good to know because I think he is. I think animals in general are sensitive, but he definitely is. So, how can we use fairies and elementals to help us manifest? And we and is that pretty much? Could we use them to help manifest in our love lives and our finances? Is it pretty much anything? Yeah, absolutely. And then literally, what you need to do is just ask the fairies for help with a particular issue. So, if you want more prosperity and abundance if you want more love and romance, more sex, because fairies are very linked to the earth, they're more than ca capable of transforming your sex life into something that's really passionate and groovy and lovely. Um, but also they're, they're really good at helping you to have very strong connections with not just your own family, but with friends and other people as well. They're really good at kind of magnifying the amount of love and the very deep connections that we need with other human beings that I thought you explained beautifully at the beginning of the program as well. Um, so, yeah, um, you can ask them for anything. And um, one of the things we did, uh, it must be about 10 years ago now, is um, on a, one of the um, yew trees in our garden, we actually got loads of stars and we wrote down all the things that we wanted the fairies and elementals to help us with and then hung these stars on the, the tree and literally within a matter of weeks all the things that we'd asked for which some of them were quite specific about you know our parents who were quite poorly at the time and needed some healing literally um that happened and within about three weeks of us hanging our wishes on the trees and saying you know we did a little ceremony of it really and just said we want all the fairies and elementals attached to us to actually start helping us with this because we know we're out of our depth with everything that's happening at the moment and literally our finances improved our um, love life improved and um, our parents help uh, health also improved as well and also we'd um, we'd given them a fairy door as well so that we knew that the fairies would be able to get in really easily um, and be able to help them and all of our families think we're bonkers but they're, they're because they've seen the really brilliant results that we've had as a result of working with fairies and elementals it's actually changed their belief system they kind of yeah they used to say yeah well they're really bonkers and then they're <laughs> away with the fairies but because they've seen how what a positive influence working with fairies and elementals has been, they've actually come round to saying the same thing. And my dad particularly will often say, oh, I've asked the fairies to help me in the garden. 
because um, he's not able to do as much gardening as he would really enjoy. So he said, you know, I've done what you said and I've asked the fairies to help. And literally his garden is as lush um, as ours is now. So, yeah, it is just a matter of handing it over to the fairies and elementals and saying, I need specific help with this. And uh, one of my lovely friends is a grounds maintenance man. And he'd seen our garden when he'd come round and he said, how is it that I hardly ever see you out in the garden doing anything? And yet your garden looks so magnificent throughout all the seasons. And um, I know he's very sceptical about comp therapy, but also particularly about fairies as well. And I thought, I don't care. I'm just going to say it. So I said, do you want to know the truth? I just asked the gnomes, the pixies and the fairies to help me. And because they really love the earth and they do this automatically with our permission literally i don't do very much in the garden i do the planting and the gnomes and the pixies and the elves do all the rest and um, about half an hour later he came back to me and went okay so supposing i believed you and i was like yeah he said what did i do to get the help so i said literally just ask mark just say i want some help with this playing field or whatever it is that you're doing and about a month later, he phoned me up and said, you are barking mad, you know that, don't you? And I was like, yeah, I don't know, and I'm not worried about it. And he said, but I've done what you said, and I can't believe the difference it's made. Well, I'm sign me up. I'm doing that. And you know, we <laughs> talked about it a little bit beforehand, and my definitely my yard definitely needs it. It has been... Um, it, it needs help. I try to keep up, but it's a little overwhelming for me. So that's a plan. Yeah. Now, I'm curious when you, for, first of all, I love the idea. I'm very visual, but I love the idea of writing down what you want on the stars and hanging yeah. that. I think that that's really a wonderful idea. But do you think, so if you have your elementals, your husbands, do you feel like that it attracts maybe your neighbors, elementals and fairies to come on over when they, they're like, oh, someone's asking for help. Let's all <laughs> you know, bond together and, and make it come true. Yeah, I'm absolutely certain that's the case. And um, without being too um, judgmental of our neighbors, their gardens don't look as pretty as ours and they don't look as lush as ours. So I'm fairly sure that we've got the majority of the fairies and elementals in our gardens. <laughs> that maybe would like to be in their gardens if they... We've got lots of fairy um, statues in the garden. We've got lots of pixies, elves. We've got spinning round windmills. We've got all sorts of lovely things. And we've got the world supply of different wind chimes um, in the front and the back garden. And I'm fairly sure that if the people either side used more wind chimes and more um pictorial representations of fairies and elementals then they probably have the same results as us <laughs> no i think that's i mean i have some bird houses we have a set of wind chimes but you have convinced there you me are you there already <laughs> yes yes no well you've convinced me to get more and i live in the south so i think i could get probably most of raleigh's <laughs> elementals over to my house because you know everyone a lot of people think i'm crazy so that's good to know that i can use it for that now do the elementals, well, first of all, I want to know, because someone said to me the other day that I had pixie energy and yeah. or pixie or something around me. And what's the difference between a pixie and a fairy? I never, I couldn't tell you what, to me, they were the same, but don't get them mad. I'm not. Okay, I've got, um, I've got a, a paragraph on them here. So these are usually thin, tall, short haired, which is not you at all. Um, winged elementals who love to help plants and flowers grow with their magical pixie dust. They are sweet, friendly and very playful. You'll know that pixies have been in your garden when you see trails of metallic dust. Pixie haircuts were named after their bobbed hairstyles. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, and, yes. that, and my only... You know, I think from Peter Pan and Tinkerbell, she's probably the most famous fairy yeah. that I'm aware of. Is, is that their actual size? Was that accurate? Um, well, um, as a child, the fairies that I saw were my height. So from the time I was about two, fairies appeared to me as exactly the same height. And as I've got older, um, and, and certainly as I went into my early 20s and, and allowed myself to see them again, they became my size. So I think that this idea that 
they're only as tiny as little flowers. There are flower fairies, clearly. And I believe that every blade of grass has got a fairy attached to it that loves it and encourages it to grow and says, come on, grow, grow. And that really looks after every living thing. But um, since I've been an adult, I've realised that I maybe it's because that's the that's what I'm comfortable with, seeing fairies that are as tall as me. And as I'm only five foot one, I'm not exactly a giant, really. <laughs> but I think that um, I, because I've kind of grown up with them, I think that they appear to me in a format that I'm comfortable with. And I know that there are other people that have said they didn't know that fairies grew as big as me, if you like. They, they, uh, whenever they've seen fairies, they've always been very tiny and very miniature, a bit like you say, like Tinkerbell. And I'm not sure how much is, you know, the J.M. Barry, uh, Peter Pan thing and how much is, maybe they're more comfortable with seeing um, fairies and elves and pixies as smaller than human beings. And, you know, we, we particularly the Irish, the Celts, always talk about the little people. So they clearly have always thought that um, fairies and elementals were, were fairly small. So, yeah. No, that's really interesting. But I would think, you know, it's kind of like when E.T. the movie came out. You're like, yeah. oh, E.T., he's so cute. And, and it was a non-threatening <laughs> alien. And, you know, I know there are people who don't believe in aliens. I believe, that, gosh, we're with this whole solar system universe there has to be more than than of our course. human form yeah, definitely. but if you introduce something like et that's non-threatening yeah. and friendly then that then the fear can drop and that they can be more open yeah absolutely i'm sure that's the case yeah i'm sure yeah that's a good analogy actually yeah now do you have would you call them like i we're working we not working we're trying to bring joy and have fun and get pregnant so yeah. What elemental would I call on, or does it matter? Um, yeah, I'd call in the elves. Um, elves are really good for pregnancy, but also they're really good for any um, reproductive organ problems. So any gynecological problems, any, any male problems. So anything to do with our reproductive organs, the elves would be more than happy to help us with that. So, yeah. Okay, excellent. Because I know I've been, uh, use the wrong word, just having it in joy and surrendering and all that. And, you know, we're really good. We're not like, oh my gosh, blah, 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 blah. But <laughs> we're, you know, all right, come on, Joy, come on and bring in. Now, so for instance, I wish we would have done this interview before we got, well, we went to the beach. Now I'm going to have to go back because mermaids. I want to see a mermaid. Mermaids. <gasps> mermaids are so helpful. Um, they are very sexy. That's the first thing we need to say about mermaids. And most elementals are quite sexy as well. Um, and mermaids typify what's extraordinary about the divine feminine, basically. So they always have large breasts, large bellies, large bottoms. They're very voluptuous. They're very curvaceous. And they're really damn sexy. Really are damn sexy. They're also particularly good because they belong to the water element. Women are said to belong to the water element. Men are said to belong to the earth element. So literally, that energy is really good for nurturing, for receptivity. But again, also for pregnancy as well, because literally, they are all about the divine feminine. And what um, mer fairies are particularly good for is just helping us to go with the flow, literally, because mm -hmm. they live in the body of water where the waves are going in and out. Literally, they're very good at helping you to let go of stuff that you don't need and also to attract stuff in that you do. And we know this already, that as, one, as we let something go, we are allowing ourselves to be more receptive. Water is a very good conductor, and what water does is... It enlarges and expands energy. So it's the reason that we make our essences out of water is because uh, water naturally has that capacity. So literally what you may want to do, if you want to really engage with mermaids, you can call them in by all means. They have a very strong link to dolphins and orcas as well. 
and all the living beings that are in the ocean. But if you really want to call in a mermaid really easy, and um, one of the things you can do is just leave a bowl of water on the beach and ask the mer fairies to fill it up with their energy and then get um, put it in a jam jar or whatever, take it home and then use half of your vibrational water that's got mermaid energy in and then add either vodka or brandy and then put it in a sealed bottle, preferably either a dark blue or a dark brown bottle and then you've then got your essence which will help you at times when you need it to just go with the flow and just allow yourself to receive. Often, if we don't love ourselves enough and if our self-esteem isn't very high, then we're kind of blocking it and going, well, I'm not really worthy of this. So one of the things that mermaids help us to do, they are really very, very receptive. So literally by taking that essence, we're reminding ourselves to engage with the ocean and to go with the flow let things go when they need to, when their time is passed, and then to allow ourselves to receive as well. Is that I nice? love that because I'm having all these connections as you're talking because the beach is my favorite place. I mean, I love nature. I love hiking. I'm someone who will literally hug trees. But when I go to the beach, yeah. I relax. I Like yeah. no other place, I sleep. And you had mentioned earlier about when you uh, – uh, half an hour goes by and you don't know and I always talk about for me time stretches at the beach I'm like oh my gosh you know we've been here a week but it feels like a month that I've been here and I relax and I literally go with the flow so I'm gonna we're gonna have to run and do a day trip and, oh, and do that because so, I want to do the bowl and, and bring that essence because I mm -hmm. love that I think that's because I'm I'm much better than I used to be but I get challenged with going with the flow at some times and and yeah, trusting so don't we we all know what would be the most positive thing to do, but sometimes circumstances or um, the fact that we perhaps um, absorb somebody else's negativity kind of trashes that idea for us. So literally engaging with the ocean is, is really good. And coincidentally, any seashells that you pick up, our bodies, because our bodies are made up of 70% water, a beautiful blue green green planet, is also made up of 70% water. Anything that comes from the ocean, we recognize straight away. And uh, one of my friends is a great scientist and is also a comp therapist, which is a, an unusual blend to say the least. And what he told me, must be about seven or eight years ago, is the reason that we resonate so much with the ocean is that the chemical composition of the amniotic fluid in which we grew as fetuses um, our blood, our tears and the ocean all have exactly the same chemical composition. I was like, wow. And That's ever fascinating. Since, isn't it? It's wonderful. And ever since I've known that, I, I, I can't tell you how much it's helped me because um, you may know that I'm a seashell healer already. So I've wondered for years how it works so beautifully for pain relief. Well, if it's got all that um, connection and energy to saline water, how easy is that to let go of things? It's just brilliant, isn't it? it and is. also, he told me, um, and I didn't know this prior to talking to him, but he also showed me an article that says that um, I've been having enormous success with people who've had seashell healing for arthritic conditions. And literally, I'll put radiant shells on their knees, their elbows, wherever they've got the pain. And I was telling him that, you know, I've had the most extraordinary benefits for my patients. And he said, well, of course, you know, they're made out of glucosamine, don't you? And I was like, really? So, you know, we take glucosamine if we've got any problems with our joints, don't we? The fact that seashells have got that naturally. So putting seashells on arthritic joints um is going to have an effect isn't it it's just wonderful that's amazing and i love the suggestion about the bowl of water if we wanted to work with say uh the fire elements the fire sprites yeah. is there a ritual or something that you'd recommend yeah literally um i don't know if you can get it in the the usa but i presume you can you can get copper sulfate and literally what you do is you get your fire really roaring. It could be a wood fire. It could be a coal fire. It doesn't really matter. 
And then when you've got that, you just sprinkle some copper sulfate on and you'll see purple and green and lovely blue um, flames come out. And literally, again, I'd suggest that you just ask the fire sprites to help you. Fire sprites are very good for helping you to be more passionate. So if you've kind of gone off the boil with each other for whatever reason, just by inviting them in, and every time you light a candle, just remember that you're inviting the fire sprite in by um, lighting that candle, because literally you've already made that flame. So you've literally made a reason for the fire sprite to connect with you. And again, they're just waiting for permission to come and work with us. So yeah, if you want to work with the fire element, I'd certainly do that. And they can fan the flames of your passion. Oh, I love that. Okay, so I want to go through all of them because I have a list here. <laughs> what about um, what about gnomes? Because you've mentioned that, and you said they're related to the earth, correct? That's yeah, their yeah, absolutely. Literally, gnomes are really earthy creatures. Again, Pan said to be, um, you know, the king of the gnomes, basically, and he's really good to help you with any kind of conservation issues to do with the land. I don't know if you know, but there's a threat of fracking in the, um, the UK that's really awful. And what I've been doing and lots of other people have been doing is, as well as filling in all the petitions and doing all the physical stuff we can to stop this, I've literally invited the gnomes to come in and start doing something to stop the damage that this is going to do before it gets that far. So literally just by inviting them in would be really good. But if you wanted to work with a particular... Um, energy, um, some of the sacred sites um, in the USA, but also in the UK as well, um, I'd suggest that you might want to go and just take a teaspoonful of the earth and just bring that back with you. So physically, you've got that element with you and you're saying to the gnomes, I want this sacred energy of the earth to help me with all the issues that I want you to resolve for me. So literally, each element... Um, you're actually going to be bringing. And I think the reason that our garden's so therapeutic for so many people, we have patients who arrive half an hour before their allotted appointment time and then just sit on the decking and taking all the energies and say, do you know what? I always feel brilliant just sitting here because we've got earth, air, fire, water. We've got a little pool. We've got all the wind chimes. And literally... Um, the earth's um, always been organic since we moved here in 1984. So literally the earth is really clean and the, all that he ever has on it is horse manure, which is, is you know, is natural stuff anyway. So, yeah, I think just by having um, just a little amount of earth from a particular site that you feel a strong resonance in, let's say it's, I don't know, it's just beyond the beach and you've just picked up the soil and you take that home with you, then you've actually got the energy of that, but you've got that really strong connection to the gnomes as well. I love that, but let's hold up because here in North Carolina, fracking is an issue and in my hometown, it's, it's fracking is an issue. So again, reason. just asking, saying yeah. to the gnomes, help with this, that, that would be a way they can this. help. Yeah, absolutely. That would be brilliant. And they can do something about it straight away. But again, they need our permission. They need our permission to do that. Yeah, definitely. All right. Now, because well, I have my friend who's listening is uh, from the area and she's part of a, a it's a small town, but she's part of a coalition fighting it. And they've got a, yeah. a, a battle, but they had a had a recent victory. So anything that I can spread the word about stopping. Yeah, absolutely, here. darling. Yeah, absolutely. It's not good for any of us to be disrupting the Earth's energy. It's really not. And we will be we will be reaping, you know, all sorts of horrible things as a result of allowing this. And, you know, there's all sorts of quotes in the past about all the evil needs is for us to sit on the fence and do nothing. So anything that we can do physically, emotionally, psychologically and spiritually to help with this has got to be good. You know, our positive intention is the most important thing for all of this, isn't it? Absolutely. Now, what do you have some thoughts when working with the fairies or pixies? Yes, indeedy, I do indeed. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and grab one of your grab one of your fairy dolls, oh, so we right. can see what that looks like. I'm going to use this very sexy one to start with. 
Oh, you nice. Sit. Hold her still so we get a good shot. Oh, fantastic. And now she, so she's just the one that has tape and that you could put anywhere in the house. Yeah, absolutely. She lives in my treatment room. Because I'm a sex therapist, I want people to know immediately that I'm fine with talking about sex and drugs and rock and roll. And we have um, a great interview we did with Annie, if you look in our archives, on on sex and more that's really helpful. So feel free to check that out. But so um, grab any other props you want to show us for working with fairies or pixies or anyone. We're, we're open here. <laughs> Can you see that one? Mm-hmm. That's a little flower fairy, basically. Um, what else have I got here? I've got, oh, this one. One of my friends bought me this recently. So some little child fairies that I think is really sweet as well. That are just I gorgeous. like that, that is, that's sweet. And I've got, what else have I got here that I wanted to show you? Um, that one maybe. So that one there. Yeah, oh, nice. And we've got books of all kinds and fairy oracle cards for asking fairies, you know, guidance cards and things like that. Um, that, um, yeah, I can talk about at some point as well. But some of the now, books are there I any, since you have some there, are there any books that you recommend or specific cards that you found to be beneficial and assisting? I don't know if you'll be able to see this because it's quite huge. Can you see that? Yes. It's by Lucy Cavendish, and this is my favourite. Um, it's the Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle, and she also does Mer Fairy um, and Mermaid Oracle cards as well, and Dragon. Um, yeah, I could have mentioned dragons as well. You can call in dragon energy for the fire element because they're also elementals. Okay, well, my husband I'm, I'm, loves dragons, so I'm excited see. now. I might be able to convince yeah. him to do something with that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, The Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle by Lucy Cavendish. And I love Doreen Virtue stuff. I've got the world supply of Doreen Virtue cards. <laughs> <laughs> and so let's talk about, like, so with this deck, what do you use? Do you ask a question for guidance? And how do you yeah. use them? Right. What I usually do and what I encourage my students to do as well is to set your intention. What do you want clarity and guidance on? What is it that is it one area of your life? Is it just your love life that you want more clarity and guidance on? Is it your prosperity and abundance? Is it your health? Or is the whole caboodle? And then um, just ask how many cards do you need? So um, usually odd numbers work best. So three, five, sevens, uh, usually up to 11. And then literally go through the pack, make sure it's got your own beautiful energy in whilst you're doing them. If somebody else has used them first, just ask that their energy be taken out because you don't want to be doing a reading for them. You want it to be individual specific to you. So literally just ask for everybody else's energy except yours to be in the pack. Shuffle them so it's got your beautiful energy in and then select your seven cards or whatever. And with most of these books, it gives you a, a tiny message, a couple of uh, sentences on it so you can get a gist of it if you wanted to do a quick reading. But also they've usually got books in them as well so that you can look at the longer version of them. Oh, so perfect. Like okay. That. So you could, you know, go into a lot of depth about why that particular card's come up. And then... Um, one of the ways that I also use them as well is as an energy toning movement. So I've used them to rebalance my chakra points. So I found, I've shuffled through the cards and said, what do I need to help my heart to cope with what's happening at the moment? Or what do I need for me to feel more grounded? And then literally shuffle the cards and just place that on my sacral or on my heart or wherever I've needed it. And then you really feel a difference because the images are so beautiful and they're so potent because they've got that energy in. And I'm sure that by doing that, we're setting our intention that we're allowing the fairies and elementals to come in and do quite profound, deep healing for us. So you can use them as you would for any kind of guidance card, but there is that element to it as well that you could place them on your body. Um, something else that comes up for my patients as well as a kinesiologist is that 
often the fairy cards will come up um, for, and my dragon cards as well, um, at the site of a pain or an injury. So let's say that you've hurt your shoulder or whatever, literally by finding the right uh, dragon card, you could place that on it and that will have the impact. Something else you can do is um, select a card. So I'll show you what I mean. And would you use these with when you're working with someone in addition yeah. to yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So this is on my menu as a kinesiologist. So if you came for kinesiology, your, your body can ask for anything that I have knowledge of. So often it will be a particular set of guidance cards to use for this reason. But what you can do is make an essence. out. I, I just picked this one and said, what would be good to showcase this? And this is emotional healing. So what you do is place your card down, get um, an unmarked glass that has no markings on it at all. You don't want Coca-Cola in the middle of it or anything. <laughs> and then fill it up with good quality water. So um, filtered water, spring water or mineral water. And then put it on a window ledge so it's exposed to sunlight and moonlight. And then the, the next day, um, drink it. And you'll have all the energy. You'll have solar energy, which is male energy. You'll have lunar energy, which is feminine energy. But you'll also have the energy of that card. I've done it much quicker than that, leaving it overnight. Um, I work with um, end-of-life patients who usually it's cancer that's their issue. And um, I've just kind of said to the fairies and elementals, I need to speed this up because I've only got two hours with this patient and I need them to be able to drink this at the end of the two hours. And literally just by saying that and setting your intention, they've actually speeded up the process. So after two hours, the person can drink that water. If you wanted to make it into an essence, you use half of your vibrational water and then add brandy or vodka. For anybody who's got an issue with um, alcohol, um, you can also use salt. So what you'd use is high quality salt. So Atlantic sea salt. And then you'd um, add some hot water and stir it up. And when it's completely dissolved, you could add that as your preservative instead of brandy or vodka. Because for some people it is an issue. And sometimes we don't want our children to be drinking alcohol or whatever. So you could use something, um, you could use something different if you wanted to. Excellent. No. So did we, and if we answer this, I'm sorry. Is there any, so fairies and pixies, you had the great the suggestions for the other elementals from some things that they might like. What would, what should we do with the fairies and the pixies to manifest? Right. If you really want to encourage them, then um, they love um, milk and honey. I've no idea how this has come to be, but that's the deal. And uh, one of my lovely friends up in Scotland, her kids phoned me up one night and went, Auntie Annie, Auntie Annie, Auntie Annie, please tell Mummy she said peanut butter and jam will do. And we've told her that you said it was milk and honey. <laughs> and I was like, come on, Anna, what are you doing? Peanut butter and jam isn't going to do the trick. It has to be milk and honey. And um, these two little girls, I gave them um, a shell each, a scallop shell. So actually that they were incorporating more than one element because they wanted to encourage elves and pixies and fairies. But actually, just by using a shell to put the milk in and a shell to put the honey in made a big difference. And we have a tradition in um, uh, Celtic healing um, that we always leave some food for the fairies and leave it outside. Okay, that, oh, okay that's good. I'm taking notes. Yeah, good. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be a good way of attracting them. Again... The most important thing is that your energy is congruent with the fairies and elementals. So if you're doing conservation work, if you're having the least impact or the least negative impact on the earth and the ocean, then you will automatically attract these elementals um, just by saying, I need some help. And because you're doing something that is congruent with what they do, they'll actually be attracted to you anyway. And they love happy people unsurprisingly we all love happy people <laughs> and so but i want to emphasize this because you mentioned at the beginning of the hour they won't we have to ask they won't yes, just cross that line even if they think you're groovy and you're saving the environment 
you need to ask, hey, I need some help, because yeah. they were, okay. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, darling, yeah. Now, I love the ritual of hanging the stars in the trees and writing what you wanted. Are there any other fun things that you all have done to to attract the elementals and using a manifestation? Yeah, absolutely. We do something called a manifestation wheel. So what, what you do is, um, sometimes it's called a vision board. Gotcha, okay. So literally you put a heart in the middle of it um, that can be, you know, a coloured heart and then you write your name on and then you cut out of magazines, so magazines and travel brochures, um, something that represents um, prosperity and abundance. So it could be stacks of coins, it could be um, a big holiday, it could be st whatever it is, it's what you need, basically. So, and then once you've got your gold coins or you've got your monopoly of money or whatever it is that you've put on there, you do an arrow from the money to you. So you've got a double-ended arrow, basically. So you've got an arrow that's going from the money to you and from you to the money, basically. Then you have another corner where you have a picture of you and your beloved or you and the sort of person that you'd like to manifest. Um, and you have happy, smiling people in that corner. And again, you write, um, I want more love and romance. Thank you for the love and romance that you're bringing me. And again, you have a double-ended arrow that goes to you and goes to the love and romance. And then last but not least, healthy conditions. So it can be a couple jogging. It can be a plate full of lovely, delicious food that doesn't have any rubbish in it. So, and you do the same thing, a double-ended arrow. So you have love and romance, prosperity and abundance and healthy conditions. And then you add all those dreams that you've always wanted to do. If you've always wanted to swim with dolphins, you need to have dolphins there. If you've always wanted to live in a tree house, make sure there's a picture of a tree house there. If you can't find um, pictures in magazines or um, travel brochures, then you can just draw it for yourself. And then when you've done all that, add as much as you possibly can, because the universe is like ordering something from a catalogue. So if you don't give the universe enough detail, it's like ordering a pair of jeans and not saying what size, not saying that you want boot cut, not saying that you want um, sparkly bits on the pocket. So the more detail you can give to the universe, the better. And then you hand it over to the fairies and elementals and you say, for this or something better, bring it on. I love that. And you know what's interesting? You're the first person. In the U.S., we would definitely call that a vision board. But you're the first yeah. person I've heard who said using the arrows and putting the heart in the middle. Uh, so I really like that. That just, to me, takes it to another level, gives a little yeah. extra oomph. Yeah, definitely. And you can make it as individual specific as you want to. And um, I work with a lot of indigo and crystal children at the moment, and they've so inspired me with the things they've put on. You know, their drawings have just literally just been 3D um, creations that have been so brilliant that, yeah, they've really encouraged me. And um, I'd said um, the reason that I always write on mine for this or something better is a few years ago, we did a fairy workshop and there was a lady on it and she made her manifestation wheel and she asked for a little cake shop and bookshop in Cornwall. That was her dream, a little cake and bookshop in Cornwall. And six months later, she got it and then she phoned me up and went, bugger, I wish I'd said big because that's what I really meant. I really meant a really big cake and bookshop in Cornwall. And I said, just redo your manifestation wheel. As you get, as the universe and the elementals deliver it to you, tick it off and say thank you. And I said every morning, look at your manifestation wheel and say thank you for bringing me all this wonderful stuff that will make my heart sing. And you say that even when you can see no evidence that it's on its way. So it's very much about trusting the fairies elementals and the universe that it's on its way even if you can't see the shift we don't need to know how this is going to come about 
We just need to have faith and trust and go, yeah, it's on its way. So literally every day, look at your manifestation wheel and say, thank you for bringing me all this wonderful stuff. I love that. That's really fantastic. So what advice would you have or maybe what advice have the elementals and fairies shared with you if someone was really struggling right now, you know, they're just in a hard place, going through divorce, lost their job and really struggling. What would, advice would you have for them? I'd literally say allow yourself to receive their energy because one of the most extraordinary benefits of working with fairies and elementals is that they can help you to just to gladden your heart. We all know that laughter is the best medicine for all of us. Well, however tragic a time that you're going through, if you can find one little tiny drop of laughter, even if it's, you know, it's got to be appropriate humour, clearly. But I know that the reason that I'm able to work in hospices, young offenders units, women's refuges, places, psychiatric hospitals, places where normally people aren't particularly happy is because every time I go in there, I find a reason to be joyful. And I also encourage other people to laugh. I make people really laugh over the most ridiculous you know, really silly things. But once you've laughed about it, you start to feel so much better. And one of the things that, well, I suppose the the most extraordinary benefit of working with fairies and elementals is their ability to make you feel joyful, even when you've got, you know, family traumas going on, you've got health issues, you've got emotional or financial problems literally just asking for their help to help you to feel better will make a difference and also inviting your own guardian spirits in as well will make a massive difference i think it just shifts your energy even if for that moment yeah. when you take that one step forward yeah. that can can shift your energy now what one step can people take to reawaken their brilliance and you can relate it to the fairies and elementals or not but i'm all about you know, just don't watch a show, get out there and do something and live the life you're meant to. Can I show you something called Havening? Absolutely. Um, it's NLP, um, sorry, Neuro Linguistic Programming um, Technique that I learnt last May that is cutting edge. It's taken 20 years for it to come through. And basically, quite often we do affirmations that we don't believe and they don't work because literally we block them. So um, a few years ago, I was told to stand naked in front of a mirror and go, um, I'm a sexy, beautiful, successful woman. And I'd be going, oh, really? And, and inside, I'd be going, oh, really? I don't think so. So this technique is that you stroke yourself slowly. Do you want to do it? Oh, yeah, so no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're recording this because I'm going to go do it. OK, and um, I can send you the link to Havening Technique. But basically, you stroke yourself as a hug slowly down to your wrist then you stroke your hands I don't know if you can see that if I do it fairly slowly and then you go underneath your eyes to your chin and then you go across like that and what this does is it slips it under so that the radar of your conscious mind so that your unconscious mind goes yippee and <laughs> runs with it so um some of the ones I've been using recently with my students and personally as well is I'm a magnet for prosperity and abundance. I'm a magnet for prosperity and abundance. And then you do your hands. I'm a magnet for prosperity and abundance. Under your eyes. I'm a magnet for prosperity and abundance. I'm a magnet for prosperity and abundance. Everything I touch is successful everything I touch is successful, everything I touch is successful, everything I touch is successful, everything I touch turns to gold, everything I touch turns to gold, everything I touch turns to gold, everything I touch turns to gold. Awesome. I like that. that. Now, luckily, hey, everyone, this is everything's recorded. So if you didn't get all that, you'll be able to watch us. Now, Annie, Tell us how we can learn more information about you, any upcoming classes, whatever it is you've got going on you want to share. Fantastic. Um, so I'm Annie Day. You can email me at annie at heavensentbliss.co.uk. Our website and e-commerce site is www.heavensentbliss.co.uk. 
www.coincidentally.co.uk. And coincidentally, we just happened to have a fairy workshop on the 22nd of June. So the day after the summer solstice and it's in Penkridge. It's 9.30 to 4.30 and we're really celebrating it this year because it's our seventh successful year of running the fairy workshop. And so um, adults, it's £65 and for children, it's free of charge as long as you bring an adult fairy with you. That's fine. And then... Uh. <laughs> I love that. It sounds fun. I wish I was in the UK. I'd be there in a heartbeat. I I think you would really enjoy it, Julie. I'm absolutely certain. And then on July the 19th, uh, at Heaven Sent Bliss, we're doing The Art of Manifesting. And this is the third successful year that we've done that. And it's based on the secret, but we're also going to be doing things like the havening technique that add to our affirmations. But just helping people to get in a really positive state for manifesting their dreams into reality and also helping people. We've made mistakes in the past by um, limiting ourselves in what we ask for. Sometimes we need to think bigger. And the reason that the universe isn't giving it you is just that they're going, oh, come on, really? That's the least that you want? Why don't you go for something much better than this? So um, part of what we do on the course is we help people to get out of their own way and also to ask for bigger, better, brighter future that they really want. So that's on the 19th of July. And then we've got our seashell healing at the Kerbera Craft Centre on the 13th of September. Outstanding. So if they go to heavensentbliss.co.uk, they can find out all this good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, thank you. It's always a joy to have you on and we'll have you on again. You do so many things and I read your yeah. list. And I'm like, oh, I've got to have her on for that. I have no clue what that is about. <laughs> and I am absolutely delighted to be your guest again from the UK. I can't tell you how wonderful it is that you've invited me again. I'm so grateful. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, everyone, get out there and reawaken your brilliance, and we will see you here next week. You've got lots of good stuff to share with others, so get out there and do it. All right, bye now. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Health In with Debbie Brooke, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, The Tanya Love Show, Reawaken Your Brilliance with Julie Seibert, and if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com Sponsored by Atomus.com Makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals That vidblasterguy.com CarolinaApparel.com and DeltaForce.net